third scroll box has just arrived so this is july's scroll box um <clears throat> yeah it's um a little lighter than usual it's not as heavy um sounds more like pencils than pens so exciting to see what's inside it so i'll just give this an open Okay, so neatly packed as ever, put that to one side, don't want to see that. Uh, yeah, there's not as many supplies in here. Oh, something there. So let's open this in a second. Okay, so this is the featured artwork for today, for today, for this box. Um, that is really pretty, I absolutely love that. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, so, oops, where's that card from? The scroller challenge is Honeybee, so I'm assuming that's why this is based around that. That's really gorgeous, absolutely love that. So, this is all the information about the featured artist. Um, Okay, okay. Don't know how to say that. Um, she is a tattoo artist in Sweden. Mm. Amazing. So, yeah, really pretty artwork. That's gonna go on my wall, I think. I think that's my favorite so far. It's my favorite. Pretty. Anyway. Okay, so here's the paper. So we've got some textured, textured, toned paper. So on this side, it's kind of got a rough kind of, kind of texture, and then this side is a bit smoother. So you've got a light and a dark tone there. It's nice. Okay, let's open up these pies. So. Scroller box sticker um, and a nice sweet. Oh, it's one of those sweets that comes with a tattoo that you um, rub onto your skin. <laughs> I used to love these. Okay, on to the supplies. So let's get this out. Okay, so first thing on the list are these Faber Castell Polychromos pencils. I've been wanting some of these for ages, but they're just way too expensive for me to buy, so this will be really good to try them out. Some nice pencils. Um, it says these professional quality coloured pencils have a soft waterproof wax lead. They contain superior pigments which give amazing light fastness and colour brilliance. Polychromos uh, leads can be sharpened to a very fine point allowing them to be used with fine detail as well as cover large areas with colour. So the colours we have, let's get some scrap paper to use. Okay. The colours we have are cream, black, middle cadmium red. Dark cadmium orange and white, obviously. So that's nice, perfect for this um, bee theme because they're obviously bee colours. <laughs> That'd be nice to use. Um, the next thing on the list is this Tombow Mono Zero Eraser. Okay, so the thinnest and most agile eraser line on the market. A 2.3mm round eraser can be advanced forward with a single push of the top. Well, there we go. 
So like a mechanical pencil, basically. And the design of the holder facilitates precise movement and includes a clip for easy carrying and the eraser is refillable and is the same high quality eraser that Tombow is famous for. To be honest, uh, I've never heard of this. Maybe I have, I might have seen them, but I've never registered that I've heard them. But the, the fills are that about that long. So that's about how much rubber you get. So you will go through these pretty fast. But um, they are refillable, so I'll have a look to see how much refills cost um, when I do my voiceover. Uh, the next thing on the list is a twin tip magic marker okay uh, in blood red sounds interesting um, magic markers have both chisel and fine tips in a coordinated color range and can be used on many different surfaces they contain new xylene free inks that are virtually odorless and completely safe to use uh, oh, I had to take off. So you've got your chisel tip and your bullet nib, as most markers are. Uh, don't know. Again, I'll research into these and talk to talk about them in the voiceover. But I'll give them a try in a second. Okay, the next thing is the pen a pencil sharpener. So I think I've already got one of these types before. Metal simple pencil sharpener. We couldn't give you a box that included a bunch of cool pencils without the ability to keep them sharp. It's a simple solution that will keep your polychromas sharp while you take them through their paces. Okay, um, and it actually talks about the paper this time. Um, this is Ha Lana pastel paper. Please tell me if I'm saying that wrong. Um, we always want to provide you with a sample of quality paper to test out your supplies on, and this month we selected two shades of 160 GSM, 76 um, pound pastel paper in dark grey and pearl. So well, that's interesting. Um, give those a try. So I'll just try out the supplies quickly and then. I'll see you shortly for the artwork that I decided to use. So we'll test out the polychromas. I'll only do a couple of colours. So you've got your black here. Oh, this is so soft. Very soft. And you can get that very fine. Oh, very nice. This would be really nice to do some um, bees with. So that's the black. Let's try maybe red. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Very, very nice. Uh, and then orange. I like that. Very crisp colour. Much nicer than my uh, pencils I've got at the moment. Very nice. Okay, so they're the pencils. Now this twin tip marker. It feels, it's bleeding on this paper because it's just simple paper, but it feels nice. It's got a very bright colour. Very nice. Uh, the colour overlays very nicely. Yeah, um, can't really say much about it. Um, very different smelling to most markers. Um, I wouldn't say it's virtually odourless. <laughs> um, it does have a bit of an odour, but anyway. Um, so that's that, and then the rubber. I can't really, probably won't rub out this. Oh, it rubs out a little bit actually. That's not bad. Yeah. So, like I say, this is gonna use up. It's similar to my do and. A mechanical rubber but just with a very very fine point to this one so yeah I used to have one a bit bigger than thicker than this so it'd be interesting to use and I probably would try not to use it too much because I don't want to 
do you know, use it up too quickly if I can't get easy refills. But I'll talk all about refills and a bit more about this marker when I've done a bit more research about them. Cool. Um, so that's it and I'll see you very soon for the artwork. Thank you very much for watching. Okay, so on to the artwork. Um, I, as suggested by the scholar challenge, I did Honeybee and I kind of, I was thinking, it took me ages, I was thinking, I obviously need to incorporate this Honeybee and do I do something cute like maybe a kitten, you know, lapping up some milk or something and then a Honeybee um kind of like lands on its nose I, I don't know i was thinking i tried to think of cute things to incorporate a bee into um much like the featured artist but then i kind of took the inspiration of the hexagonal shapes from the featured artist um, and made a template and i was playing around with this for a while um and then i just i don't know i I kind of thought, what happens if I'm peering through the like hive hexagons to a bee? And then I thought, I'll, I'll do something more like a very detailed bee with the the colouring pencils, the polychromous pencils. So that's what I went for. So I just sketched out. Like I said, I used my template, a template. So I measured out, you know, 120 degrees, blah blah blah, to create the hexagons. So they're all uniform, and then I cut them out with a craft knife and that's how I drew those hexagons to all be in line and everything um, and then I drew a honeybee so that's all I did um, like I said I'll, I said that I would do a bit of research into the erasers and the magic marker just so to clarify a few things so the magic marker um, I finally found the brand on it, it's by Speed Dry, but when I searched it, all I could find was very old fashioned pictures uh, of kind of like people, I don't know, from the 60s or something holding these magic markers. Um, and so, you know, I don't, I don't know whether they're a new brand, I don't know, I couldn't really find much on it, so if anyone else knows anything about it, please feel free to comment. Um, I did try a few things, so I that tester you saw me do at the start I put some of my alcohol 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 ink from my pro markers over the top uh, with a colorless blender and it just faded the color it didn't blend it, it didn't do anything it was kind of weird um, water also didn't affect it as for price uh, you, you couldn't buy them individually but as I could see anyway as far as I could see all I could see at the that they were pretty expensive in packs um, so I'm not really sure about these I don't know if they're a new thing but like I said the pictures I saw of them were pretty old-fashioned so I I'm not sure if anyone could tell me anything more please do um, as for the eraser um, I found the actual eraser price was ranging from £2.50 to £3.50 from what I was looking at and the refills were about a pound less than those prices for a pack of two. So I don't know whether it'd be worth investing in that. Like it is very good for you know rubbing out detail, but I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure. Anyway, I'm sure some of you might want to do your research on that if you did were, were interested in any of these. I just thought I'd do some research for you. Um okay, back onto the artwork. So like I said, I sketched this out. Um and then using the small rubber, and I also use my Derwent um, mechanical rubber, electric rubber, like I showed, um, just because it was just quicker to do because it, it allows me to put a bit more pressure on it and rubs out a bit quicker. Um, and I didn't want to use too much of this um, fine rubber out when it wasn't really needed for very fine detail. Um, you will see me use it though. Um, so I sketched out the honeybee behind the hexagons and then rubbed out the bits in between the hexagons that obviously you're not meant to be seeing um, and then started with adding the detail so I added the black detail on all the very dark parts and I just layered up the colour and I'd, I wasn't sure whether I was using the right side because I did a couple of tests on both sides 
and I thought that the textured side was this side that I was supposed to be working on but I am not sure it might have been the smoother side so maybe I was doing it on the completely wrong side of the paper um, but anyway um, yeah so it was very grainy at first but I just layered up the colours uh, I apologise for this part, I was trying out an IP camera and it's very good at close-ups, you'll see in a bit this close-up's not very good um, and the video was really good, like it showed a lot of the detail I was doing but unfortunately the video was about 20 minutes long in real time so I tried to speed it up but as I sped it up it became very glitchy as you can see so I do apologise for that, um, next time I'll just cut it down but I didn't want to cut any of the good bits out because all of this close-up that you'll see is very um, key to what I did like you'll see that I'll leave little patches out that you might think would look weird if you were doing it yourself so I didn't want to miss out any of the artwork and um, so I do apologize that it's a bit glitchy next time I'll sort something different out Um anyway and um, so I just layering I'm just layering up the colors um, adding you know darker points because if you pressed on too hard and applied too much of the waxy crayon to the paper it would not allow you to overlay any more colour onto it and of course a B isn't obviously one block of colour it does have a lot of detail and a lot of individual bits of colour so um, I just layer it up very light and then when there are parts that I do need darkening quite a bit usually the black and then a bit more orangey parts a bit later on that's what I did so as for the edges of the bee if you find pictures of close-ups of honeybees you'll see that they have this very fine hair on their body and it's kind of highlighted by sunlight usually behind them so you'll see a very bright like almost white yellowy white um, highlights and then I just used a bit of the black to show that those were the highlights and um, I added this little curl to the top of the, the honeybee's head uh, which I thought was quite cute and um, so anyway I just keep layering that up um, until I get the desired detail and when this finally zooms out in a second and it stops being glitchy um, you will see the detail from afar and you'll see the bee coming together and I'll pitch in again when I'm doing something a bit different. Another thing to note, I would probably sharpen the pencils to be a lot sharper when doing such fine detail like this a lot more because I know that these pencil crayons are pretty expensive and I don't have a set myself. I didn't want to waste any of it so a lot of the time I was working with quite a blunt pencil and therefore was really struggling to get that desired detail um, but usually I probably would sharpen in the future. So that's it zoomed out and you can see some of the detail and this is me going in with the red. I couldn't really place where I'd put the red pencil crayon very much um, so I just darkened up a bit of the orangey parts on the B and now I'm adding the highlights with the white polychromos pencil. So as you can see there that's the light shining behind the honeybee.
this is quite a um, lengthy process to do all this detail but I just wanted to make sure that the key feature of this was the bee and nothing else so that's why there's so much detail in there Um, this was one point that I really wish I had kind of like a blue or a green polychromos pencil just to add a bit of a background behind the hive because I find everything looks very flat um, even when in a second I had some kind of like depth to these hexagons um, I find everything just looks flat, it needs some colour behind the bee in between to, to signify that that is behind a little bit more than it already does so I go around these hexagons with my red pencil and I alter a couple of the hexagons because I just thought it was too far left. In in hindsight, and I wish I'd kind of done the B, it's more central on the paper, but um, I suppose if I was really unhappy with it, I could just crop the paper um, to be a bit smaller. Um, yeah, so after adding the hexagons where I eventually want them, um, I line those with the red polychromos again. This is me using my template, so that's the template close up again. Um, I really struggled finding a place to use this magic marker um, because it's very bold colour compared to the soft colours of the pencil crayon. Um, so I really struggled to place where to use it, if that makes sense. Um, or just to point out, this was me extending the bee's leg because it did extend, but because I didn't have a hexagon there at first, I didn't draw anything in there, so I'm just extending it. Um, yeah. Um, so I add some depth to these hexagons by adding like almost a wall to them. So you can't see this, the left side of the wall, but you can see the right side of the walls. Um, so this is me doing that with the black polychromos. And then I darken it with some red polychromos and then I go over that again with the twin tip marker which I kind of regret, I wish I didn't do that because it kind of looked a bit softer without that. But I did want to use every single supply that came in it and not add anything to it so that's why I um, did that and I'm just kneading up with the rubber there. Um, and then I still felt it needed something extra, uh, I'm not sure if I like what I added extra. Uh, I'll let you critique me on that, tell me if you do like it or not. Um, but I just added some extra hexagons but softened them a little bit by just doing a gradu graduation from black to the yellow, so black, red, orange and then yellow and then that fades out to the colour of the paper and it's not a full hexagon, they're only half hexagons. Um, and that's where I end up stopping. Um, like I said, I regret not doing the B in the centre of the page, but I'm not, I don't know if it looks artsy or not, I don't know. Um, and yeah, I, I just wish I had a, you know, like a blue or a green, like I say, to put in that background. Um, the pictures at the end, there's the full piece, and then I've done a close-up cropped shot of just the B. Um, oh sorry about this, this is where my lamp kind of got in the way, I didn't realise it was in front of the camera at this point. Um, anyway, um, so I've done a close up of the bee, a photo of that at the end, um, and that's kind of how I wish I'd done it, more central and kind of filling the page a little bit more, but um, I think it still looks really good, I really like the detail on the bee, and this has actually really made me want to do a complete B, you know, just a B on a piece of paper. So I might do that on the other toned piece and maybe add some of my own supplies in there um, just to really make some of the highlights pop and the shadows darker. So uh, yeah, um, so this is my scrawler box opening and scrawler challenge done um, and I'm really, really pleased with it. So please let me know what you think and thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.